very moment, all over the world, giants of industry are negotiating deals involving vast sums of money. This, my friends, is called commerce. So you see, J.B., buying amalgamated steel for $13 billion would allow you to make more safety pins than any of your competitors. It's a deal, B.J. Do you have a pin? Here you are. Not pen, pin. And this vast world of commerce also includes the little village of Foggy Bog, Wisconsin, where at this moment another negotiation is going on. So you see, J.B., your purchase... Uh, I told you before, I don't want any Wigglesworth Indian guide election. Now get out of here! Hey, gee, Professor, he's got what they call sales... Re sales resistance. There is no such thing as sales resistance, Wilberforce. Yo, uh, Fillmore. Hmm? I keep telling you my name is Fillmore. Fillmore Bear. Of course mm -hmm. it is. Now, where was I? There is no such thing as sales resistance. Right, Egbert? If there's something to sell, there's a suck and someone to buy it. <laughs> Remember when I had to unload those 40,000 refrigerators? Uh, yeah, Professor. Well, there's not an Eskimo in the Arctic whose igloo isn't equipped with the Wiggles World Wonderland. Yeah. Imagine, Professor, all the Eskimos sitting around waiting for their refrigerators to defrost. Yes, but lately, Alfredo, I just don't have the same get up and go. So maybe you're getting old. Old oh, nonsense. It's just that peddling from door to door doesn't offer enough incentive for a creative person such as I. I was destined for a nobler profession in life, Father. I must go onward and upward. Uh, okay, let's go, Professor. I can't. Something keeps holding me back. The memories of long ago? No, my foot is caught in this door. You see, Albrecht, ever since I was a small boy, I knew I was destined for bigger things than Wigglesworth Indian guy. <laughs> my mother used to tell me, Waldo, hitch your wagon to a star. And by George, this may be it. It's coming. I can see it. Hey, hooray! Did you have to do that? Now I've lost it. Uh, Jay, I'm sorry, Professor. Uh, was it as big as a bread box? No, wait! Coming back again? Uh, is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it... Will you stop already? This is probably the most magnificent idea I've had in my entire life. Now, where can I find her? Uh, find who, Professor? I'm not going to tell you, Benson's now. She'll just blow that stupid bugle again. No, uh, no, please, Professor. I promise I won't blow it again. All right. Do you remember Baby Jane McConkey? Yeah, the famous child movie star? Oh, I've seen all her pictures. See, whatever happened to... Well, Wensonham, the world is ready for another Baby Jane McConkey, and I, Waldo Wigglesworth, am going to discover her. Yeah, gee, Professor, that's real exciting. <laughs> blow that bugle again. The professor... Where are you going to find a little girl who can be a movie star? Well, that's a good question. In a town like Foggy Bog, with a population of 617 senior citizens, where in the world am I going to find my baby Jane? Hi, fellas. Long time no see. Osmond, there she is! She? Oh, come on, Waldo! Property! Have you ever considered having the world at your feet? Fame, fortune, your own swimming pool! But, Professor, I have everything I could ever want right here in Foggy Bog, Wisconsin. Did you say swimming pool? Yes, Hoppity, and much more! Candlelight dinners, African hounds, Hoppity Hooper, I am going to make you a star! Heated swimming pool? Yes, my boy, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. You can grow orchids in it. Is there any way in the world that Professor Waldo Wigglesworth can make Hoppity Hooper into a little girl movie star? Be sure to watch the next one of these things. Whatever happened to Baby Hooper? Well, here we go, kid. Back to the land of situation comedy. As you will remember, in our last episode, Professor Waldo Wigglesworth promised to make Hoppity Hooper a star. Hoppity was a little reticent at first, but when the professor mentioned... Your very own swimming pool, my boy! 
Hoppity was starstruck. What do I have to do, Professor? Well, first of all, we need a long blonde wig. A long blonde wig? Naturally, my boy. How else can you appear in my box office smash? What box office smash? Son of Baby Jane. Uh, Professor? Yes, Egbert? Uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane? But, Professor, I want to be myself. Gee, I can dance and sing, and I can do terrific bird calls. Listen. That was a bird call? Sure, that was a Baltimore Oriole. Sounded more like an Arizona horned toad. Uh, it's got kind of a beat to it, though, Waldo. Listen. Hoppity, that's it! It's a new sound! Here, put on that wig! You are now my singing sensation, Baby Hooper! And so, almost overnight, Baby Hooper was the new croak and roll sensation. Come on, all you folks! Yeah, yeah! Come and do the croak! Yeah, yeah! Hold your breath and stop your chest and that's the way they croak! Yeah, yeah! Teenagers all over the nation picked up the new sound almost immediately. Hoppity's croak swept the nation. Now, Leon, tell the class where is the capital of the United States. D.C., teacher. That's right, Leon. D.C. is correct. Pardon me, buddy, but could you spare a, for a cup of coffee? I'm sorry, but I don't have a on me. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you elect me, Dolphins, I promise to put an end to and furthermore will increase and you will have it in every part. You may not agree with what he has to say, but you have to admire his... Come on, all you folk. Yeah, yeah. Come and do the croak. Yeah, yeah. Hold your breath and thump your chest and that's the way you croak. Yeah, yeah. Do you realize, Fillmore, that we have made the entire nation baby Hooper conscious? Our fame and fortune is made. All we have to do is sit back and exploit Hoppity Hooper. Uh, here comes Hoppity now. Oh, what's the matter, Hoppity? You look a little depressed. I want to be loved. Loved, loved, but Hoppity, the entire country loves you. You're getting more fan mail than Lassie. But it's not me they love. Well, who then, Hoppity? It's my... I'm nothing but a new sound. Life is but a sound, Hoppity. A poor player who sprats and frets his hour upon the stage. And then he's heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Well, can I get rid of this blonde wig? The wig? The wig that's part of your image, Hoppity. That wig is a symbol. What do thousands of people do when they see that gorgeous blonde wig? They go. Yes, it's amazing, isn't it, Fillmore, how people become affected by a fad. First the twist, then the mashed potato, and now the croak. Well, old friend, I'm certainly glad that we have the intelligence not to be affected. Ah, uh, Fillmore? Fillmore! Not you too! Why, this is the most... The most... Don't tell me that you're affected by my image, Waldo! Shut up, boy, and hand me that wig! Will Waldo get back his voice? Has the whole world gone? Tune in next time and see. Pardon me, but your image is showing. Or turn in your wig, Waldo. I'd know you anywhere. In our last episode, if you will recall, everyone was doing the croak. Come on, all you folks. Yeah, yeah. Come and do the croak. Yeah, yeah. Hold your breath and thump your chest and that's the way to croak. Yeah, yeah. Even Waldo was doing it. Come on, all you folks. Yeah, yeah. Come and do the croak. Yeah, yeah. Hold your breath and thump your chest and that's the way to croak. Yeah, yeah. The whole world had gone croaky. The only one who kept his wits about him was Hoppity Hooper. Waldo Wigglesworth, you have created a monster. Meep, meep, meep. Waldo Wigglesworth, I'll never croak again. Waldo, 
Waldo. Maybe. Hoppity, realizing that Waldo Wigglesworth was beyond reasoning, sprung off in search of a cure for the whole croaky situation. Come on, all you folks. Yeah, yeah. Come and do the croak. Yeah, yeah. Hold your breath and thump your chest, and that's the way to croak. Yeah, yeah. Honey, we don't do that anymore. I mean, baby, the croak is out. The croak is out? I mean, you are something else, sweetie. The croak went out with the chili bowl habit. There's a whole new sound called the boing. The boing? Boing, boing, boing. What did she say? She said boing. Boing? Boing, boing, boing. Boing, boing, boing. Come and do the boing. It's not hard to loin. You grab your goil and take a toil and then you do the boing. Boing, boing, boing. And sure enough, the croak was out. And the boing was in. Everybody was doing the boing. Come and do the boing. It's not hard to loin. You grab your goil and take a toil and then you do the boing. Boing, boing, boing. Then I can go back to my own sweet, lovable image. Just plain Hooper. Poor Waldo Wigglesworth. Did you say Waldo Wigglesworth? Where is he? Boing to me. Well. Oh, come on, take me to him. But, but. I just knew he was near. His magnetism is drawing me to him. But we're going the wrong way. Professor Waldo is over there. Oh, a hopperty, my boy. I know this is going to break your heart, but. <laughs> Confound it, Fillmore. I'm having a hard enough time bringing this to Hoppity without your interference. But, Waldo... You, you see, Hoppity, the public is very fickle. Though I don't know how to tell him, Fillmore, I hate to see a grown frog cry. Well, Hoppity, you know, one minute it's the croak, and the next... Oh, you tell him, Fillmore, I just can't seem to do it. And to the next minute, it's the... Boing. Why, you did that rather well, Fillmore. But I didn't do it, Professor. Oh, my, oh, my. Susan Swivelhips. Don't tell me you're the boing girl. But who else, sweetie? Do you remember the last time we saw each other, Waldo? Well, I can explain that, my dear. You left me waiting at the altar. But uh, the sheriff was coming. We had to get out of there. Not only did you leave me at the altar, but you left me holding a hot bottle of Wigglesworth Indian elixir. Waldo! Waldo! <laughs> Boing! Boing. Why in heaven's name did you have to blow that confounded bugle? Yeah, because you were standing on my foot. Will Waldo free himself from Susan Swivelhips, the boing girl? Will Waldo get off Fillmore's foot? Will Hoppity become just another teenage croak? You'll see all this and more in our next episode, Laugh and the World Laughs with You, Croak and You Croak Alone, or A Boing in the Hand is Worth Two in the Bush. In our last episode, Waldo Wigglesworth ran into an old girlfriend, Susan Swivelhips, who he had left waiting at the altar with a hot bottle of Wigglesworth's Indian elixir. She had now become famous as the Boing, girl. What was that for, Fillmore? You were standing on my foot. But I'll get off your foot just as soon as the boing girl releases my collar. And I will let go of your collar just as soon as we're married. M married? Me? I, I, I'm not the type. I'm, I'm more of a wolf, you might say. A, 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 a foxy wolf. But, Waldo, don't you want someone waiting for you when you get home in the evenings? Well, I've already got Dinsmore uh, here. Someone to set you in your easy chair. Someone to take your shoes off. Those aren't shoes, and that's me. Even read the comic strips to you? But Susan, at heart, I'm just a rolling stone. And Waldo slipped out of Susan's grasp and dashed away. <coughs> Fortunately, Susan had thought to tie a rope around his ankle. 
Parker, he's right, Susan. He's a rolling stone. Finally, the Boeing girl made Waldo promise to meet her at the chapel in two hours. How time flies. Psst. Uh, hey, we're all packed, Professor. Uh, packed? Uh, yeah, to catch the eastbound freight out of town. No, Fillmore, I'm tired of running, tired of being hunted like an animal. Uh, then you're gonna marry up with Susan Swivelhip? No, I'm going to think my way out of this predicament. <laughs> Uh, gracious! Uh, goodness gracious, Professor! Uh, whatever did happen with your head there? I, I don't quite know, Fillmore. I think I've blown a fuse. Uh, AC or DC? I shall try again. No, Fillmore, it's no use. My brain is dead. Like a battery, it needs recharging. Uh, don't worry, Professor! I'll have your head recharged in a minute! Turn it off, Fillmore! To fully charge, turn on current all the way for one half hour. Turn it off, Fillmore! You're lucky, Waldo. You ain't got no dead cells. <laughs> uh, gee, Professor, it's good to see you back to your old self again. Beep, beep. Turn it off, Fillmore! Beep! Oh, there you are, Waldo. Come on, we'll be late. We can't keep the preacher waiting. Beep, beep. Say, you really must be nervous. You look positively blue. Uh, red. Uh, yellow and green. Turn it off, Thelma! I heard the happy news, Waldo, and I want to be the first to congratulate. Turn it off, Thelma! Hold on there. The professor, he's himself again. <laughs> Susan Swivelhips, hoppity hoop up. Do you know what you've got? A gold mine, a veritable gold mine. Hoppity, what do you do? I croak. And you, Susan, what do you do? I boing. And that's it. A croak and boing a mammy. A croak and a boing a mammy. A croak and a boing a nanny? Certainly, you've heard of a hoot nanny? Well, look what they've accomplished with just a hoot. We've got a croak and a boing. So Professor Waldo Wigglesworth, croak and boing a nanny became an overnight sensation in every college in the country. Hush your croak, little darling. Hush your boing, oh my dear. Hush, Hush your croak, boing, boing little, little darling. darling. Cause your daddy is here. Didn't I tell you I was a star maker? Uh, yeah, Professor. You sure did. <laughs> Turn it off, Fillmore! Well, folks, it's... Hoppity, haven't you forgotten something? Oh, oh yeah, wait a minute. Uh... And now, here are some scenes from our next show. You better notify the police. Hey, what for? He didn't do nothing. They'll help us find him. Oh, yeah. And Fillmore and Hoppity started back across the lot. But as they drew near the truck... Oop! Come on, Fillmore. Uh, I don't think I'd better. How come? On account of something has got me by the ankle. And I think I... Oop! Well... Now we'll never know what Fillmore thought, for when Hoppity hopped to the hole... It's empty! Gee, this is awful! What am I gonna do?